after the tumultuous election of Joe Biden to the office of the president. A lot of liberals and followers of the Democratic Party chastise the true left and progressives for not celebrating with them, right? Give us a day to celebrate and give Joe Biden a chance, they yelled. And our response was, we have. Look, we gave him four chances to be president, which he failed most of them because he was revealed to be a corrupt, plagiarizing liar. In one of his major runs for president, he literally plagiarized a British labor leader speech as well as a speech from Bobby Kennedy. When he was caught, he reprimanded the media for calling attention to his lies. He also lied about his academic record. Uh, Biden boasted that he was at the top of his class and he could beat up all your dads. Well, it turns out that Joe Biden was at the lowest percentile of his class. And so far, not one dad has been beaten up by Joe Biden. Well, well physically, uh, he's financially beaten up all our dads by bailing out Wall Street multiple times. Beyond that, he's had over 40 years in politics to show us that we should give him a chance. He's championed Nixon's war, racist war on drugs. And look, we know it was racist because one of Nixon's advisors said that the war on drugs was devised as a plan to associate marijuana with the hippies and, and the anti-war communities and heroin with the black community. This way, they'd get, uh, they'd get their homes raided and prevent any sort of real organizing or stability within their communities. And he said this to a reporter on tape. Really, the Nixon administration doesn't understand tapes. Now, Joe Biden also wanted to create a police bill of rights as a booster to qualified immunity. This would have essentially ramped up police departments killing innocent people of color exponentially. His 1994 crime bill has been proven to be the cause of the racist mass incarceration program, and he's one of the architects behind the three strikes rule under Bill Clinton, creating the prison industrial complex. And none of this should really come as a shock from the man that proudly worked with segregationists because the economy was more important than equality and human rights. I mean, Joe Biden never found a war he didn't like. He's a staunch supporter of the Iraq war, which is now proven to have ignite, been ignited under false pretenses. But hey, Joe Biden does love a good lie, doesn't he? He's also been accused of sexual misconduct and assault, but don't worry because the Democratic Party has revised that history by pretending it's not real. Me, hashtag me too, only when it's convenient enough to get your votes. But beyond that, progressives have given him a chance on the campaign trail as well. Right, His bid for president started with claiming that he has no empathy for millennials, which goes against the core message of his presidency, which is to lead with empathy and science. After that, he's told climate activists like Ed Fallon to go vote for someone else when asked about stopping disastrous pipelines like Line 3. He's freaked out on journalists when they've asked him about attacking Bernie. And to continue his trend of lying on the campaign trail, he said that he marched and was locked up with Nelson Mandela and had been endorsed by the NAACP. Look, the NAACP doesn't endorse any candidate and put out a statement that Joe Biden lied. And there's absolutely no evidence that Biden was ever with Nelson Mandela. I think he might have gotten Nelson Mandela confused with the Mandalorian, who he thinks is named Nelson. And now President Joe Biden continues the proud tradition of expanding the United States empire. Right before the inauguration, Joe Biden said, if Georgia turns blue, Americans would be getting their $2,000 COVID stimulus checks immediately. So on day one, President Biden, well, he moved ground troops into Syria. And this came after the Syrian ambassador pleaded with Bi the Biden administration to withdraw troops and, quote, stop stealing Syrian oil. 
considering corporate media fawned over Donald Trump bombing a Syrian airbase in April of 2017, calling him presidential, and Joe Biden's visceral hatred of Trump himself, well, he wasn't going to let that walking mimosa win. So he became presidential on day one by ignoring the requests of a sovereign nation and basically reinvading the country. Now, sure, the claim from the Biden administration is that this is just routine equipment transfer between Iraq and Syria, two countries that have voted to have the United States military out of their country. Look, this is like a house guest that overstays their welcome, but is also setting something on fire as they leave a room. And then when you call them out on it, they say, hey, this is a routine fire alarm check and everybody should just chill out. How about this, Joe Biden? How about you routinely move your troops and equipment out of a country you have no business fucking being in? So if America is all about preserving and spreading democracy, why wouldn't they listen to two sovereign nations that have voted for the exodus of American imperialism? Well, because, as Lindsey Graham pointed out, Syria has oil that America has called dibs on. And, I mean, most of American foreign policy is based on calling dibs in the name of manifest destiny. And in response to the Iraqi parliament voting out the American military, the U.S. responded very respectfully by starting construction on more bases on the Iran-Iraq border. But remember, Joe Biden said he'd lead by diplomacy, not military intervention, which is why he's bombed Syria again. I mean, if the media actually talks about this, they'll probably call this explosive diplomacy. You know, Biden's diplomacy is basically putting his fists up and saying, I'd like you to meet my friend's drone and strike. Now, the official statement is that they were bombing Ar Iranian militias that were going to attack American troops in Iraq and were also responsible for bombing uh, another bombing in Iraq that got an American contractor killed. Now, the important thing to note here is that the bombs did have a rainbow flag painted on it and also the words Black Lives Matter. So everything is fine, guys. These were very, very inclusive bombs. And this bombing was an effort to de-escalate the situation because as we all know, when you blow something up, it really de-escalates tensions. Look, it's simple, right? If your neighbor's plants come over the fence onto your side of the yard instead of going over there and having a conversation with them. Just put a stick of dynamite in their bedroom. And then when it explodes, they'll be like, boy, do I have egg where my face used to be. Ugh, I'll move those plants right away. Message received. Oh, man, I'll move them right after I get the use of my arms. Problem solved and with military precision at that instead of words there was a really cool explosion that made everybody feel like they were in the movie expendables and ironically that's what corporate elites like joe biden the bushes trump and obama see the working class to be expendable i mean hell that's why they've been recruiting the working class to fight in their wars anyway currently Iran is under American sanctions put put in place by Donald Trump and are being continued under the empathetic presidency of Joe Biden. These sanctions are preventing Iranian citizens from getting medical aid during a pandemic the likes of which the world has never seen. Look, let's not mince words here. These and all sanctions are nothing more than economic warfare. America puts sanctions that prevent average citizens from getting aid food, and access to social programs, and American propaganda spins that story to claim that the nation's brutal dictator is depriving these people of basic needs. Why would he do that? This way, America can fuck over the middle class on a global scale and then win capitalism. Unless we forget, America was the first one to ramp up violence against Iran. In January of 2020, Trump assassinated the beloved and high-ranking General Qasem Soleimani as he was leaving Iraq from a diplomatic peace mission. 
Biden could have used that empathy he has by apologizing for those actions and lifting the sanctions on Iran. And look, he's got plenty of empathy to spare considering he's given no empathy to millennials. But instead, he bombs Iranian militias in a country where they're fighting the same enemy. Just in case anybody forgot, Iranians are fighting ISIS as well, and General Soleimani's Quds Force has bailed out the American military several times before. The whole world has called for an armistice during the pandemic, and America's new president, who claimed to take the pandemic seriously, is creating an environment where the pandemic will only get worse. Now, Biden engaged in a hot and economic war with Iran while citizens in both countries are suffering and waiting for some kind of relief. And if you're shocked by the fact that the checks didn't go out or that Biden isn't following his foreign policy plan of diplomacy, I point you to his four decades of lies, cheats, and approving wars to steal oil from other countries. And if you think that comment about stealing oils is a stretch, don't forget that Joe Biden fought harder for near attendance Senate confirmation than increasing the minimum wage. Near attendance once said in an email that America should steal Libya's oil to pay for our deficits and fund social programs. If not, then the only options are to cut Medicare and Medicaid, which gives the lowest income earners and elderly people health care. Biden wanted this person to run budgets to ramp up wars while simultaneously denying an increase of minimum wage. Now, Biden did temporarily stop arms sales to Saudi Arabia, but didn't did say he'd defend their sovereignty against the Houthi rebels in Yemen. And Yemen is currently a humanitarian crisis thanks to America's support of the Saudis. Now, the U.S. should permanently cut their ties with Saudi Arabia, considering their long history with human rights violation, but also with the confirmation that Jamal Khashoggi, the Washington Post journalist, was murdered by the crown prince. Now, it's important to note here that what happened to Khashoggi is a tragedy, but corporate media and the oligarchs are only making a big deal of this because he was one of them. Khashoggi was a Washington Post writer and was highly critical of the Saudi monarchy. Had he also been critical of America's role within the monarchy, there would have been silence, just like they're silent, on Julian Assange. And fret not, folks. Joe Biden will be continuing the war on the press by looking to appeal the faulty extradition case of Julian Assange, despite various groups calling for him to drop the case. Now, don't forget... The UK judge said that Julian Assange would commit suicide if he's taken to the horrific conditions of America's prisons. The same prison conditions that Joe Biden helped forge. And by continuing his case against Julian Assange, Joe Biden is basically giving the thumbs up to Assange's possible suicide. I doubt someone that leads with empathy would be pro-suicide. It's a weird position to take. Now, if you think this is the beginning of the end of the American arms sales, think again. Egypt just received about $200 million worth of weapons from America, and Raytheon CEO Greg Hayes remains optimistic because he doesn't see an end to the conflict in the Middle East. And lest we forget, the current Secretary of Defense is Lloyd Austin, who sits on the board of Raytheon, which means that there is a financial reason America needs to engage in armed conflicts. And Biden is still friendly with the Saudis and has told them to refocus their efforts in stopping Iran. Now, the major fear is their Iran's nuclear capabilities. Under Trump, America withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal, which stated that Iran can only enrich 3.67% of their uranium. Since America backed off the deal, Iran increased their uranium enrichment, for which the sanctions were put into place. Now, the question is, how can sanctions be implemented on Iran when technically they didn't do anything wrong? And therein lies how and why the economic sanctions put on Iran are illegal and just a callous act. Biden very clearly stated that he won't lift the sanctions on Iran until they join the Iran nuclear deal. 
Iran claims that they won't join until America re-enters the deal first, and this seems fair considering it was in the U.S. that bailed first, and it was the Democrats that claimed we needed to rejoin the deal. I'm, I'm, I'm really starting to think that Biden has the words empathy and authoritarian, warmongering, racist asshole confused. Look, most of the nuclear arsenal is owned by America and Russia, thanks to the dick-measuring contest that was the Cold War. Also, America is the only nation that has fired a nuclear bomb on another nation and has said they'll do it again because, you know, they have a huge dick. Russia has said they'll do it if they're attacked first. Now, this makes America a far bigger nuclear threat than Iran. With an enormous stock of nuclear weapons and an itchy trigger finger, America is the doomsday prepper of countries. Other nations should be looking to put limits on America's nuclear capabilities. America's defense here is that they're the good guys with guns, but these guns have the potential of ending all life on the planet as we know it. Look, good guys don't need to point weapons that would end the world at other nations. They'd talk out their differences and figure out a way to achieve amicable solutions. The future of wars under Joe Biden will likely be less drone bombs and explosions. There's a good likelihood that he'll still bomb other countries and sell arms to anyone and everyone that wants to buy them. But... In order to get approval for hot wars, Biden is going to engage in more economic wars. These economic wars will provide us propaganda, using the suffering civilians as a reason to go in and attack whichever nation has resources America deemed as theirs. Economic wars are the new way America will manufacture consent for their wars and engage in them using the authorization for the use of military force or the AUMF. Look, Joe Biden is a pathological liar, and in order to get the resources, uh, in order to get the resources Manifest Destiny demands America get, the empire demands a liar like him at the helm. It's hard to ignore the broken promises from the Biden administration, and we're not even at day 100. If the first 40 days are filled with wars, invasions, ignoring the plight of the working class while simultaneously causing the working class of a different nation harm, then I am very, very concerned of what lies may come on day 100, and I think you should be too. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this uh, content, please make sure you hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out uh, with, with your friends, with your enemy, whoever you think would benefit from content like this. Uh, content like this is often suppressed. And in fact, one two of my videos have already been taken down from YouTube uh, based on faulty reasons, based on reasons that don't make any sense. I've talked about it endlessly, but it is a form of censorship, a uh, form of censorship that goes against anything that the Democratic Party and the establishment wants people to hear. Uh, so if you enjoyed this content, please make sure that you like, share, and are subscribed uh, to this podcast, to these to these video series, because we're going to be putting more out. Uh, I'm very excited to announce that I'm bringing back the live virtual stand-up comedy shows once a month, last Friday of every month. Tickets for those shows are available on my website, at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're on my website, you can do a plethora of different things. You can catch up on episodes of this very podcast, uh, of my live stream show, Road Reflections, and past episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, uh, which are related to the live virtual comedy shows that I'm doing. That's, that's how they're recorded. They're recorded in front of a live virtual audience. So uh, you can catch up on those. Uh, if you want to, you can also make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. Sustaining members get free tickets to those live virtual comedy shows I just talked about. Uh, they also get additional bonus stand-up comedy content that nobody else gets, as well as some free additional fun gifts that I am planning to, uh, to send to uh, the sustaining members. You can also check out my stand-up comedy albums uh, that are available on my website. And if you go to my Bandcamp, which is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com, you can get 
pretty much my entire stand-up comedy collection for free. Uh, uh, there's, I think, one comedy album that you might have to pay for right now, uh, but everything's on a pay-what-you-can uh, price level, so if you would like to get most of that stuff for free, you can do so over on my Bandcamp page, which, again, is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. And lastly, I also want to let you guys know that uh, if, uh, if you're not a fan of the YouTubes, uh, or the Facebooks and their censorship of uh, of content creators uh, that uh, talk about anti-establishment topics. Uh, a good place to go right now would be to Rockfin. You can find my channel over on rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, they're a blockchain crypto site that primarily focuses on ensuring that content creators can earn a living by creating content and they're uncensored so you can basically talk about what you feel like you need to talk about without the censorship of any sort of algorithm uh, and uh, and all the content will be curated based on what you subscribe to so once again go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, the subscriptions are about ten dollars a month but when you become a subscriber over at rockfin you not only get my premium content but you get the premium content of basically every single content creator that's on Rockfin. That's Graham Elwood, that's Ron Pacone, Lee Camp, Kim Iverson, Nico House, Jimmy Dore, The Convo Couch, Action for Assange, and plenty more. Uh, so be sure uh, to to check out Rockfin, and if you're ready to leave YouTube, that is the place to go to, to become a subscriber. Leave tips for channels that you like, and there's plenty of free content on there as well. Thank you so much for tuning in.